Salutations, crustaceans. I'm Lobster, and this is going to be a quick look at all the bases on my wall of bass. A lot of you have specifically asked me about some of these instruments, so I thought I'd put together a quick video just to showcase each one of these. Let's take a look. Before we begin, go ahead and pinch that like button so my hand can turn back to normal. Thanks. So the first bass we're going to look at today is a very, very, very special one. I just got it, and it's this. The Ibanez Affirma AFR 105 from the early 90s. So this is it. The Ibanez Affirma AFR 105. Designed by luthier Rolf Spuler. These were produced by the Fujigen company out of Japan. Only about a thousand were produced, each one hand-built. I believe these were offered as both a 4-string and a 5-string, and there are three different models, the 100 series, the 200 series, and the 300 series. I don't know the specific differences between them, I need to look into that further, but I'm going to be doing an in-depth Affirma video looking at all three Affirma models, the 105 here, the Ergodyne EDA905, as well as the Affirma Reissue, the AFR5 WAP that I have as well. So these are extremely rare bases, and for very good reason. Anyone who has one usually holds on to them for a very long time. It's always been a dream of mine to have one, and it's finally come true, and I'm very, very excited. These are very special bases because their design and their technology really put the limits, and were very much ahead of their time. Look at the thing. They also sounded great, with a two-band preamp, a piezo pickup, and a magnetic pickup as well. This gave you a lot of versatility and really great tones. This is what this bass sounds like. Let's move on to the next bass. This is one of my very favorite instruments, my Rickenbacker 4003 SW. Now this isn't my first Rick, but it's absolutely my favorite. You may have seen my video on the 4003 S-5 5 string, and that's a great bass, but in my opinion, this takes the cake. This one is currently strung up with some TI flats, and it just sounds wonderful. this thing. Let's move on to the next bass. This, my friends, is the Fujigen, or FGN, J Standard Dark Evolution. This is made by the master guitar crafters over at Fujigen in Japan. They make some really good stuff for other companies, but the stuff that they make under their own label is next level. The attention to detail and craftsmanship on these instruments is top notch, and that's what I love about them. I mean, look at the finish of this bass. The construction, the tone, everything about it is just top notch. If you search FGN on Reverb, and look under bases, you're gonna see a few of these instruments listed, and they're under a thousand dollars, and I think that's a great price. But this isn't a review, I just wanted to show this instrument, so here's what it sounds like. Let's move on to the next base. This is the Conklin GTRP4 Rocco Prestia Signature Model. This is a very, very, very special bass. Only about 30 of these were ever produced back in the early mid-2000s, before the Groove Tools line production was halted. And this is one of those. Now supposedly, this particular one was owned by Sir Rocco himself. I have absolutely no documentation to back that up. What I do have is the flight case that came with this bass. And why would a flight case be included with something from the Groove Tools line? Either way, this is a really rare instrument and a really good one as well. 
This is what it sounds like. Now I believe this is the only YouTube video in existence of this bass. Go ahead, search Conklin Rocco Prestia or Conklin GTRP4. You'll come up with this video and nothing else. You heard it here first, folks. Let's check out the next bass. Now this might look a little bit familiar. This is my Status Graphite Electro 2 Fretless. I already reviewed this one, and this is actually the only bass that I've reviewed on the wall thus far. Now you already know why I like this bass. I mean, I gave it five claws for a reason. This thing is just... Like butter. Butter. Let's check out the next bass. This is my Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray. I don't know, I just like the color. I've never played a Stingray that I really liked until this one, and man, this one is just great. Finished in a gorgeous fire mist gold, I think this is also quite a looker as well. Man, this thing's a hoot. Okay, let's take a look at the last bass. Last but not least, this is my Epiphone Jack Cassidy Signature Edition. This particular one I purchased about seven or eight years ago, and I've had it ever since. This is in the limited edition Silver Burst, and I think it's a gorgeous finish. I recently had a hip shot bridge installed on here, and it's currently strung up with some Labella flats, and this thing just sounds so good. Man, I love this thing. This is a great bass. Stay tuned for my next review video, which is going to be on this, the Epiphone Jack Cassidy Signature. Well, that's it. Thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to leave a comment and let me know which one of these basses is your favorite. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, until we groove again.